This is Hardcore Minecraft, where I built my starter base on this massive island and even got myself some netherite. But I want full netherite with completely maxed out armor and tools, and I can't do that without trading with villagers. If you saw my last episode though, you'll know that I put on experimental features. So if I want every enchantment, I need every type of villager. That's why today I'm transforming my island into a massive villager sanctuary, housing villagers of every profession and every biome so I can complete my full netherite set. But first, I have no rockets whatsoever. I have absolutely nothing. I I'm stuck down here and I also forgot to turn on my texture pack what a what a great start to this episode that was cool that looks really that looked cool from my perspective so with this paper and some compasses which I forgot how to craft oh please don't be iron no finally grabbing this redstone from episode one and now I can craft the maps fill them in and using the glass panes in my cartography table, I can lock each individual map. And now that I've locked every single map, I can come over here and place all the maps on the wall. And now that is my map from episode one. You can see the temple was there. That's the lava lake with the rune portal. And that was where I started with Poe. But there is a lot more land to work with on this island. And that's why I want to transform the entire island into a giant custom trading area. But before I do that, I need to actually clear the island of any anything that's in my way. And this axe is not gonna cut it, I don't think. Literally. So to give myself some experience for a new axe, I'm gonna build Dash Plum 4's Enderman Farm. Hey, you know what? Now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, look at that! That actually matches my, that matches me pretty well. I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Anyways, that should be everything. So now I should, in theory, be able to just look at the Enderman and kill them. 12 seconds later. What is this? this is insane! This is so loud! Efficiency 4. That looks good. Perfect. So let me go ahead and clear out the entire area. That took forever. There are floating vines here. Oh, free cam. What a wonderful mod. And if you're wondering how much bamboo and jungle wood I got, here you go. With that sorted out, I went out to find more elytras and I ended up finding a couple of good swords, including an iron sword perfect for the Enderman farm. But I can't keep repairing my elytra with other elytras, so I have to get myself mending. And to do that, I need a swamp villager. Luckily, there's a swamp about halfway between my base and a village, so all I had to do was bring some villagers there. This was torture. I brought the first villager to a dead end, so I just made him a Fletcher so I could trade with this other guy for some bread. I ran out of food. I brought the second guy along a river, but it was the wrong one, so I had to bring him across to the right one, and then boated him over. Then I did pretty much the same thing with the third guy, but this time I didn't use the wrong river. With them in the swamp, I built a villager breeder, put them inside, and gave them some carrots so hopefully they'll breed and create swamp villagers, meaning my path to mending has been paved. But this small endeavor took about 40 minutes despite being so close to the village. This is where I realized that this project could be more troublesome than I anticipated. But for now, I'll just worry about outlining where the biomes go. Okay, and now if I go ahead and enter free cam, we can see my outline, which is, uh, I probably could have done a better job. I did not space these out as well as I thought I did. But we can go ahead and begin the simplest biome, the savanna. I don't know where I want to put the houses yet, so planting these trees is really all I can do for now. Okay, so next order of business is, I thought I saw a dark oak log that wasn't stripped. I didn't strip these? Wait, did I do it? I missed all of these. That's annoying. I am sorry for that. Well, it seems like I'm a stripper and I'm going to hell. That was not a good way to word that. With unstripped logs aside, I broke my portal, got up to the nether roof, and built a new one. This is because I'll be using the nether roof to transport villagers later on in the video. And using chunk base, I built a portal to the desert, which luckily had a village. But for now, I'm just grabbing sand, sandstone, cacti, and dead bushes so I can lay the groundwork for the desert biome. I only place the sand. Anyways, that's this section done, but I need to move on. This is my last elytra, and I don't have mending yet. So we're gonna head back to the swamp and see if I can make a chunk loader. I hope that this is working because I'm going to fly off now and begin work on the second biome, the third biome, which is going to be a mangrove swamp, meaning I need to find a mangrove swamp. But with the nether roof, getting there is easy, and this is satisfying. What was not satisfying, however, was placing all the mud because I had to work around the hills and I wanted to make it look like the mud had spawned there instead of just being placed on top of the dirt. But in replay mod, it is pretty satisfying. Now, since I had gotten both my shovels from the end cities, they already had mending on them, so I was able to repair them at the Enderman farm. Speaking of mending, I had a little treat waiting for me at the villager breeder. Oh! You've grown up! You're a real- Oh, there's two of you! So after getting emeralds and leveling up the librarian, 
Mending. Yes, mending's right here. Oh my goodness. It's gonna cost 33 levels for this because I've repaired this elytra so many times, but it's okay. I don't ever need to worry about repairing this thing again, except right now. That feels so good to be able to fly again. But now it's time to continue building more biomes. Taking a look at the island right now, it's pretty flat. So I've come up with an idea, which is to build a giant cliff that spans across the taiga, snow, cherry, and desert biomes. There was a reason I didn't worry about finishing the desert earlier, but to build this massive cliff, I need a massive number of stones. Okay, it's really not that much. I just don't have farms for anything. Speaking of farms, I actually grabbed materials to build a wither skeleton farm so I could have a beacon for a stone farm. But after I got the materials, I realized I could just collect the stone manually in the time it would have taken to build those farms. Yeah, I'm smart. I did the same thing for the andesite and tuff, but at least I found some diamonds when I was down there. And good thing I planted those acacia saplings because that got me like a third of what I needed. I'm sorry, Savannah Biome. But after about four hours of gathering the blocks, I'm finally ready to build the cliff. Oh, and I've never built a cliff before. Surely this won't take long, right? How many zombies do I have to fight? Leave me alone. Oh, oh crap. Holy crap. That's a baby zombie with a sword. I don't have my rockets out. I don't have my rockets out. Oh my goodness, dude. Nah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta sleep the night off. That is crazy. And that's the last block of dirt. So now finally, if I fly up, the entire cliff is now in place. This thing looks ridiculous. But it's time to move on to the next part of the cliff building because cliff building is still not done. Man, I am still... This stage has taken forever. This is the longest stage of the entire video, I promise. Now that the walls are in place, next I have to do the top. So I'll need podzol, grass, sand, and snow from this ice spikes biome. But filling in the top doesn't mean the cliff is done yet because I still need to finish these side walls to separate the layers. By the way, shout out to Henry Paka for his cliff building tutorial. It helped out a ton because like I've said, I've never done this before. And after making sure the cliff is entirely lit up, I believe all of the cliffs are now done, meaning this massive cliff is finally complete this is so cool okay okay Whoa. to complete stage two of the build i have one more biome to put in place the taiga i already filled in the pods on the cliff but the ground still needs some work i didn't have enough pods left over so i grew giant spruce trees to make some more however every tree planted was just another tree to be removed and i had to give up this idea because i eventually ran out of bone meal little did i know there was still plenty of pods behind my cliff so i just dug that out and put in the taiga biome I really wish I had thought of that sooner. But that concludes stage two of the build, so it's time to move on to stage three, breeding the villagers, which starts by me needing some hay bale. And paper, and food. Over three stacks of hay bales, so that should be plenty for the villager breeders. What the heck? Hold on a second. I I'm not gonna fly too close to that, but... What is this? It's like it cut through the land. Look at that. That would honestly, it'd make draining this place a lot easier. Hold on, let me get a screenshot of these coordinates. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Hold on. Next, I need to make some chunk loaders so the breeders can run even when I'm not there. But I need more redstone. That's the mine shaft. That's not exactly what I'm looking for. Oh, redstone. Ooh, diamonds. Okay, making some progress here. Is there any other ores around? No. Diamonds, diamonds. Any other ores around? No. I already built one of these in the swamp earlier, but I need to find one in the windswept hills, grove, desert, and savanna. Don't, don't worry about how this looks. All that matters is that it works. But there is one more chunk loader I need to build, and it'll serve two purposes, to run the villager breeder and to run an iron farm. Remember, I'm building a custom village, which will house 99 villagers. So to transport them, I'll be using minecart tracks to get them to their future homes. But that'll require hundreds of rails, and 16 rails cost six iron ingots. So once again, I'm building ENX04's iron farm, so when I'm done building the houses later on in the video, I should have an Enough iron to craft all the rails I need. So now that the trunk loaders are done, I can build the villager breeders. But instead of doing the one I made in the swamp, I'm going to use a design by Lazy and Farms because I actually want it to work. But I mean, that's it. Like it's it's really small. I literally just have to do that five more times. That's all of the villager breeders actually built. The breeders themselves are built. Now we just need to populate them, which is going to be a whole another story. But for now, I'm just going to do one so I can bring them to the other breeders later. I still have two more villagers in the houses, so I'm going to use a minecart track to bring them in. I'm going to go ahead and break the door and place a minecart in there. Please get in the... Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. He's in. If I take this villager and push him along the rail, he should hopefully, perhaps, maybe... No, 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 no. No, no. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, Mr. Villager. Okay. No, no emoting. Get back there. 
That's not exactly how I imagined that working, but it did work. You are about to become a very important character in this series because you are going to have a lot of breeding to do. It's going to be very weird, but it's okay because it's Minecraft and you aren't real, so nothing I do matters in this game. Like that. Nope. You have to go the other way. You have to go, the, you have to go right here. You have to go right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Break this block. And they're good. Do you guys remember my last hardcore series when I built a villager farm? Yeah, that wasn't fun. But guess what I'm doing today? Building more villager farms. Aren't I just so... Aren't I great? Villagers? Get busy. Like, seriously, you have a lot of work to do because I need to actually populate the other villager breeders. Since I don't have enough villagers to do all the villager breeders, I think what I'm going to do instead is collect the materials for the houses that the villagers are going to stay in. Wait a minute, I know this village. Oh my goodness. Is there is there an evoker? I'm gonna kill the evoker. Oh, I killed an evoker and I got a totem again. Ah, I got another totem. Man, that has been that that raid has been going on for so long. And I've gotten three totems from that raid. That's that's fantastic. And now finally, I have every material I need for these house builds. That took so long. My inventory is a little bit full right now. And now it is day 172, which means a certain villager breeder should have had enough time to work its magic. And villager breeder, yes, there are quite a few villagers in here. That's good for me because I definitely need to have some villagers transported to other breeders. And I also may have trapped one in here earlier because I was testing out this little minecart system. D don't worry about that. Like I said before, I'm using minecarts to transport the villagers, so good thing this chunk loader did its job. That should be enough. Nope, it's not. But it got me to the three breeders that were closest, that being the windswept hills, jungle, and grove. And after giving them all some bread, I took a detour to put mending on my helmet and sword, then found something pretty interesting in the savannah. I need to travel up the mountain as best I can. It's gonna be very annoying with all these mobs. What the heck? Oh, dude, what the heck? Oh. It's dripstone. Wait, what the heck? So after looting the spawner, I set up the savannah and desert breeders. Why did I not do this earlier? There were plenty of villagers here to populate these. But anyways, I need torches because right now it is a mob fest. And to be honest, as much as I don't want to have to deal with a bunch of torches, I'm going to deal with a bunch of torches. We've already done it on the cliff and that made the cliff a lot safer to work with. Let's see if I can do the same thing with these other biomes. And I believe that is the last of the torches. So now if I fly up away from my island and turn back, the entire island is lit up. That looks incredible. Now, obviously I didn't light up everything. Um, first of all, I, I meant to put lanterns here. It's wondering why it was so dark up here. Yeah, that there were supposed to be lanterns up here the entire time. Okay, anyways, I could light up this, but I don't really want to just because I think it takes away from the shadow and depth effect it has. Obviously, the over here is not lit up, but I'm not building over here, so I don't care. And also because that's going to be for a future video. But the island is now fully lit up and we're ready to start building the houses. To build the houses, I'll be using tutorials by Mr. Mirror as a base with each biome having different color palettes to represent the seven villager types. Remember, I'm using experimental features, which primarily change villager trading for librarians, cartographers, and armorers. So I'm starting with these houses first as they will be present in all seven biomes. Librarians and cartographers share a house while the armorers have their own house. And although I'm essentially building the same house over and over, the different color palettes allow them to feel unique. Besides, building similar houses makes the process go by much quicker. That solves three professions, but what about the others? Well, I decided to build seven more houses with each one being dedicated to a specific biome. For instance, given that the swamp borders the river, I dedicated this area for the fishermen and even built a little fishing dock if I ever decide to do that. In the taiga, I put the stonemason's house since the normal taiga biome sometimes has those mossy cobblestone rocks and I like the idea of them taking those stones and crafting them into more building blocks. For the snow biome, I put the tool and weaponsmiths here since working with lava would probably warm them up in a cold biome like this. This might be my favorite exterior of all the houses, but uh... Yeah, I didn't do well with the interior. Maybe I just need more room to work with. So I'm building a barn in the cherry biome that'll later house the animals I have on the island, including stables for horses on the side of the barn. And don't worry, I didn't butcher the interior this time. Speaking of the butcher, the desert cliff was a perfect spot for the butcher's and leather worker's house. And this is actually where I'm gonna keep the pigs. I know, this is disgusting, but hey, it's a good decoration. And if that flesh turns out to be rotten, I can sell it to the clerics that'll live in the savannah. Okay, I promise I'll stop. One thing I like about this house is that Mr. Mirror used armor stands as makeshift crosses, which can 
considering that clerics also live in churches seems very fitting. Circling back to where I started, the final villager house is the Fletchers, consisting of a tower and an archery range, because I will definitely be using that. I should use that. You know what? I'm using that in the outro. Anyways, with all the houses complete, all I had to do was connect them, which of course meant digging up more gravel. Yay. But after connecting the houses with a path that circled around the entire island, everything is fully connected. I want to note that I did not connect this way or this way. And that's just because I felt like that would have like blocked off the temple a little bit. So there's not really a need to block it off with a path. I kind of like the idea of it being more open, especially because next up, I have some decorating to do. First order of business is correcting this puzzle. Then I'm going to add a trim around the cliff so it doesn't look so flat. And now if I fly away... That's much better. I wasn't sure how the sandstone slash sand combination was going to work, but yeah, that definitely works out. You know that this has been here for a while, and I understand that's like part of the natural generation, but um, I think it's about time I cover this up a little bit. As much as I'd love to have this very scary cliff down here, I think my animals might fall down there, and I can't afford to lose them, so... Wait, I remember this part. I was terrified. This is exactly- I remember terraforming this last episode. Man, that's so weird. I believe the first biome I should decorate is this savanna biome because it's honestly the easiest to decorate. All I have to do is place in a couple of these trees. I would say we could definitely cover up this area just because it doesn't contribute much to the biome itself. Maybe I just put one more here. Maybe a tree back here. I missed some blocks here. Did anyone else notice this? That I missed these blocks? Yeah, see, like I had extra, I had extra cobblestone stuff for a reason. And then look, cobblestone, cobblestone. There we go. I had extra bricks for a reason. Okay, that's interesting. Um, moving on. For the desert, I put down catches of cacti and used the little string I had to keep some of the cacti shorter than others. I also built a little oasis with some sugarcane around it, sort of like I did when I transformed the end in my last season. I did not finish the path. Are you kidding me? I didn't connect this either. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry, everyone. Okay, that is now... Uh, let's add a couple more. Now it's complete. I didn't. I don't know how I didn't notice that earlier, but it is complete now. Next is the cherry biome, and similar to the acacia, I'm really only planting a few trees with the addition of some flowers and a heck ton of cherry petals. No, seriously, I got a bunch of bone meal, used it all up, then found more petals when I was searching for hay bales since the villager breeders needed more bread. But with the addition of a few bee nests, the cherry biome was complete. To decorate the snow biome, I wanted to make a much smaller version of Jarecraft's ice spikes because I thought that'd be cool. I just couldn't figure out how to build an ice spike. Like, look at this thing. What is this? I eventually settled for whatever these are, but from far away, it's... I'm moving on. In a similar fashion, I just planted more trees for the last three biomes, mixing in mangrove and oak trees for the swamp, and finishing out the jungle with jungle trees. Uh, before I do anything else, kind of been going this whole episode without diamond boots, considering mine broke earlier from phantoms. I have not been going the whole episode. It's been like a few minutes in the video. Okay, it's for me, it's felt like it's been a while. Um... This is not my enchanting room. So I'm going to go ahead and enchant these boots a little bit. Uh, Death Strider 2? Really? All right, whatever. You know what? That's awful, but we're going to, we're just going to keep it for now. Putting my new boots to work, I blended the edges of the biomes together, mixing the blocks so that the perimeters are still defined, but not as harsh as they were, so the build looks more natural. So now all the biomes are blended, the trees are in place, looking fantastic. The build, as far as I'm concerned, is finally complete. And now it's time to populate it. With, with villagers. I'm, I'm gonna enslave them. Beginning stage six of the project, I thought this process would be easy. After all, transporting the jungle villagers into their homes wasn't difficult at all. Even the Fletchers weren't bad, despite the weird placement. However, when it came to literally every other villager type, it just, it was not fun. I didn't have enough plains villagers, so I had to find more hay bales for the breeder. When trying to get the savannah villagers, what the heck is that? Well, good thing I put in the glass. I mean, at least we know the glass works, but Really? One of my windswept villagers died in the minecart. So again, I didn't have enough. The snow villagers were great. I almost feel bad for making them live like this. I tried moving the swamp villagers, but again, I didn't have enough. So I went out to get even more hay bales. I then transported the savannah villagers, which was then followed by me needing more hay bales. But don't worry, because once I started moving the desert villagers, I didn't have enough and searched for hay bales. I went back to moving the windswept villagers and accidentally brought an extra one, so this island will be home to 100 villagers instead of 99. But after hours of transporting these guys, you are the final villager, meaning my village is now complete. Let me just go ahead and get rid of the rails real quick. Let's go ahead and deconstruct this entire portal. And with this very last block, 
the entire village is now fully complete. But I'm not done yet, because after cleaning up the island and putting the animals into their pens, it's time for the final stage of the project, completing my full netherite set. I am off to enter the nether to look for an upgrade template, and I can't do that here because my nether portal goes to the nether roof. But here's my other portal, and now I'm in the nether. Is this a bastion? There's a nether portal. Wait! This is where I found my first upgrade template. I can't believe I found the- I just found the exact same bastion I found before. That is so weird. What the heck? <laughs> there is a whole bridge bastion right next to that bastion? I don't know what bastion that is. Please tell me there's something up here. Oh, there's a chest right here. There's a chest right here. Uh, nothing but magma cream. Ancient debris? I was wondering what that was because my texture pack changes that and that's really weird. Maybe I just leave and I go to a different bastion because I don't know what I'm doing. 12 seconds later. What am I dropping into? What am I dropping into? What am I dropping into? This is stupid, this is stupid, stupid. I could not have been more stupid in this scenario. I may not have a brain, gentlemen, but I have an idea. I am jumping out of here. I'm flying to the center. I'm just gonna block myself in. Okay, I could put a bone block down here. <gasps> there it is! There it is! There it is! There it is! Okay, that was kind of neat. Um, gosh, how do I... Where am I? Okay. Oh, that was insane. That was so cool. And I immediately undid my coolness by saying that. Okay. Yep. I am. Yep. I'm lost. All right. That all my coolness is worn off. Just out of curiosity, how many upgrades can I actually make right now? Okay. I can make, I can make five. So I can use five, which covers four tools. And that's not enough. I need more diamonds. Yeah, I was, I was trying to see if I could just uh, not have to... Wait a minute. Well, I have enough now. <laughs> I have one diamond to my name now. And one diamond ore. Oh my gosh, I can make a block of netherite. That is so weird. Look at this. But anyways, my gear is not ready to be upgraded yet. So let's not upgrade... Fire protection. It annoys me so much that that's fire protection. And I can't make a helmet because I just spent all my diamonds on upgrades. I do have to go diamond mining. So it's not going to be a bunch of diamond mining. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, um, like I was saying, it's not going to be that much diamond mining. I just need enough for some... I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to do... I'm going to do... Let me get another... Let me get another thing. Now I can head over to the Enderman farm, make a new helmet, put protection on it, combine it with my current helmet, put looting three on my sword, and spend way too much time trying to get feather falling on my boots. There it is, and combine the boots. For the final enchantments, I can use my new village to trade sticks for emeralds, and with those emeralds, buy mending. And we can head up here to my enchantment setup and get mending on my boots. Heck, you know what? Let's put mending on the host. Uh, let's just, yeah, why not? And now, what everyone has been waiting for this entire time, and what I've personally been waiting for as well, let's grab my emeralds, let's grab my netherite, let's grab my upgrade templates, let's grab the armor trims. It's finally time to convert everything into netherite. Oh my gosh, this feels so weird. I am not doing it for the hoe. I'm sorry, that is not a maxed out hoe. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Uh, yes, I am. And you know what? That is cool. And now I can add the armor trims to my netherite armor. We're gonna add a coast to the helmet, an eye to the chest plate, an eye to the leggings, and the snout to the boots. And with that, my netherite armor is complete. This is not all there is to it because there is one more thing that I forgot to mention. I have a mod called Elytra Trims, which means I can take another emerald and another trim and I can add it to my Elytra. And there we go. And if I put on the Elytra, oh my goodness. How do I look flying? Oh, I look so cool. The Oh, the coast trim was perfect for this. And as I fly up here, I can take one last look at my island. And there it is. The completed island of the video. We have villagers for every single profession with all seven unique biomes for the villager trade rebalance in the experimental snapshot, all in memory of Poe. Poe, this is your empire, my friend. I hope you are looking down on me from above. I am not building a giant panda face so he could do that. But if I, I just, just imagine i'm what am i talking about 